Will KD's attitude lead to success? I think it will. Um, first of all, let's remember he already has had success. He is a two-time champion. He's a two-time NBA Finals MVP. He is a person that I consider to be the best in the world. Kawhi Leonard, no disrespect, LeBron and all these brothers. This brother healthy right here, the offensive game is just on another level. I don't give a damn what anybody says. Having said all of that, here's what I like. And I talked about this yesterday. I didn't like what he verbalized because what he verbalized gave an air of nonchalance. And what I'm saying is I don't, I'm not down with that. I think that there's an elevated level of intensity that you should always have. But that doesn't mean he doesn't have it. I'm just saying he didn't verbalize it. And if what he verbalized is what I saw on the court, that I would be worried. If what he verbalized was like, you know, I'm just trying to be the best that I could possibly be. I'm not worried about a championship. I'm not worried about winning. I'm just trying to be the best I could be. And that was your attitude truly? Then hell yeah, that's a problem. I don't believe that for one second. I believe that I believe that when <laughs> Kevin Durant, I believe that when Kevin Durant gets on the basketball court as an offensive weapon and you challenge him, he's gonna be like, Y'all know who I am. Facts. You know who I am. This is the guy. And then he's gonna show you. And so <laughs> I think that because of that, with Kyrie, and I can't emphasize it because I listen. I'm a native New Yorker. I'm from Hollis, Queens, born in the Bronx. Obviously, I grew up a Knicks fan, what have you. Don't get it twisted. Brooklyn is a factory. I'm talking about the borough of Brooklyn. You don't get to be nonchalant <laughs> and, and walk away from challenges representing Brooklyn. That is not how they I, roll. Listen. That is not how they I roll. I, too, was born in the Bronx, grew up downtown, and I can tell you that Brooklyn has been thirsty for a championship in any sport going back to the 1950s when the Brooklyn Dodgers left. And mm. New York has been thirsty for a basketball championship, even ABA, and that was on Long Island, really, mm. Dr. J, with the Nets in the NBA since the year I was born, but before I was born, January of 73. There's thirst in this city for a championship. And you mentioned Kevin Durant was honest. I don't think he was honest in the interview. I thought he was blunt. I thought he was straightforward, but I don't think he was truly being honest. What do you think he was lying about then? If you're saying he's not honest. To me, the key was when he talked about his mental set, like his mental health. I'm like, because when you're as competitive, it, to be as great as Durant, I don't care how tall you are, how fast you are, you have to be insanely competitive, mm -hmm. right? So when, so it seems to me that he's accomplished enough that why wouldn't someone like him want to be the best basketball player who ever lived, right? Like you want to be, you want to reach for greatness. And when I asked him if he doesn't verbalize that kind of stuff, as Stephen A said, be, is it because he can't control the narrative anyway because we're just going to say what we want to say? Or is it because he truly doesn't want that? He said, it's for my mental health. Mm. Which to me says, I can't, like, it's too much for me to worry about what everyone says. Right? I just got to be the best I could be every day. But I think that approach is going to lead to a championship in Brooklyn. And what's interesting to me is this is like Westbrook Redux, but, but you know, Westbrook is a contemporary of his. So Westbrook's alpha personality, it's going to be different than KD dealing with Kyrie, who has some of the same kind of alpha stuff, but is younger. And so KD will be able, I believe, to not only be the best player on the team, even if he's not quite what he once was, but to be the leader of that team in a different way than he was in OKC. And I have to believe, no matter what he says, that part of coming to Brooklyn, which is really the biggest stage there is, New York City, part of that is to say, oh, everyone's saying I, or who, people like me, yeah, you reverse engineered your greatness. Yeah, you got two championships, but any good player would have done that with, with, with the Warriors. Part of that is, yeah, watch this. I'll mm. go to a place on the biggest stage with the most pressure, and I'll do it on a team that's not necessarily supposed to win the championship. And if and when he does, he has elevated his position in history to that uppermost echelon. MJ, Kareem, LeBron, KD, he'll be on that level. I think we're all in agreement that we think Brooklyn could be successful, right? I think Kyrie is a – he's the best ticket in basketball. Yes, he is. Like, I'm, I'm just so trying exactly. to tell you all yes, right he is. now. Yes, he is. I ain't never seen – I go to Nets games, I go to Knicks games, I go all games. I ain't never seen nobody do the stuff he does Kyrie. Never. Best show in sports. Yeah, right. spin it, in transition, yeah. behind no, the back. No, he's no, dazzling, no, right? No. But the one person I see him acquiesce to a little bit is Kevin. Mm -hmm. and it's almost a similar relationship that he had with LeBron, but yet LeBron is the kind of guy that says, come here, young fellow, let me talk to you. Like, Kevin's not going to be that kind of guy. They're, they're seeing more as peers instead of, you're my little brother. That's why I think that relationship's going to work.
Let me go back to a point that you made about being honest. I don't think it does anything for Kevin to be honest. Right. It doesn't do anything for Kevin to be up here and be like, I want to be the greatest player of all time. You feel that. It, it, there's certain people that when you're in their presence, you feel what it is. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say this. It was, I did a sit down with him and Stephen A. Stephen A has a very strong presence. He walk, You guys know how he walks in yeah. the room. He walks in the room and you feel it, right? There's a, there's, a, there's a feeling with Kevin when he's in these kind of environments where he goes like this. It's like, this is me sit back and more listen. Like, I'm a, I don't need to get myself in trouble by coming out here and trying to pronounce to be something and I have to be great all the time. I'm not Russell Westbrook. Mm -hmm. I'm not LeBron James. He's an enigma. I think that's why certain people don't understand him all the way. You always want to do understand him, but you can never fully understand well, Kevin. That's you what makes will, him different. You, I'm about to say something that you know. It ain't conjecture. Kevin Durant happens to be very honest and very straightforward privately. Mm, right. There you go. Right. <laughs> when the cameras sense. are rolling, when the cameras are rolling, because when Kevin was sitting, because obviously Kevin Durant and I speak from time to time, like he said, whether it's in person or on, on Instagram, that, you know, when we directly reach out to one another. And he has his beliefs, and he is not shy. And I got news for you. He's usually the person that initiates the conversation. Yep. Mm -hmm. What did you say? <laughs> to random reporters. Right. He was with the random right. people. He don't give a damn, okay? And he, and he will let you know. But when those cameras are rolling, he doesn't trust how something's going to be interpreted. He believes it will ultimately be misconstrued. And so particularly if he talks to somebody, he's looking at you like, you, you know. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.